In short, the ARP uses two different packets. ARP request that is sent to broadcast MAC address and ARP response that is sent unicast from destination host to source host that has actually sent ARP request. And now let's go to Wireshark and analyze their ARP request and responses. So let's first disable network interface card, in my case this Wi-Fi adapter, so turn Wi-Fi off. And now let me start capture. I'll select Wi-Fi adapter and start capture packets. And now let's enable Wi-Fi adapter back again. Turn Wi-Fi on. Let's wait a bit and uh, here in display filter let's enter ARP like that and let's stop capture. Notice that I already see some ARP requests and responses. And uh, please find now request that uh, goes from your MAC address, in my case it is Apple MAC address, to broadcast destination MAC address. Here it is in my case. And in this ARP request, I see basically question, who has IP address 192.168.1.1? And this IP address is address of my default gateway. Please tell to 192.168.1.182. That is IP address that was assigned via DHCP to this computer. And uh, let's now examine structure of uh, this ARP request that uh, goes uh, to broadcast uh, MAC address from my MAC address. Let's first have a look at those three sections. Frame section actually explains entire frame how it was received using Wireshark. Next comes Ethernet 2 header and afterwards comes ARP section. And please notice that there is no IP version 4 header at all. And that's what I have told you before. ARP is a separate protocol. It works on network layer of the CPAP model. And it does not depend on IP version 4 header or protocol. So let's first expand Ethernet to header. Destination MAC address is set to broadcast, all Fs. Source MAC address is equal to MAC address of my network interface card. Here is this MAC address. And either type here is set to value 0x0806 in hexadecimal format. And this number is reserved by ARP protocol. Recap that IP version 4 protocol has its own number 0x0800 instead of 806 like ARP has. And that is indication that next after Ethernet 2 header comes ARP section. All right? Let's now minimize Ethernet 2 section and expand ARP section. And in this section we see following data. We see hardware type, it is Ethernet. Next to it comes protocol type and it is set to IP version 4. And that means that in this particular ARP request we request MAC address by IP version 4 IP address. After that, after some additional fields, there are fields sender MAC address sender IP address, target MAC address and target IP address. Sender IP address and sender MAC address are set to addresses of this computer. Target MAC address is all zeros and the reason for that is that we don't know yet destination MAC address because we have created ARP request in order to get this destination MAC address. But we know target IP address, here it is. It is IP address of default gateway in my case that ends with dot .1. That is a structure of ARP request that comes from my computer to broadcast MAC address. Here we see this information in this destination MAC address field. All right, let's now try to find the response to this ARP request. And the response should come from MAC address of wireless router in my case. And here is basically this response that comes immediately after this request. Let's expand first Ethernet 2 section and here in destination field I see MAC address of my MAC computer. Next I see source MAC address, it is MAC address of local area network interface on wireless router. And also I see type ARP, same type as was in ARP request. Alright, let's expand the ARP section and here we see same information as in ARP request, but now those sections are a bit different. Sender MAC address and sender IP address are equal to MAC address and IP address of wireless router default gateway. 
and the target MAC address and target IP address are equal to MAC address and IP address of my computer. It means that uh, now this ARP response is sent directly to my computer using unicast Ethernet frame. That's why here you see unicast MAC addresses, source and destination. And basically here you see interpretation of this ARP response by Wireshark. And it tells us that IP address 192.168.1.1 is at this MAC address that starts with 98 and ends with D8. And now important notice. At the moment, my computer has this binding of remote IP address and remote MAC address in local ARP cache. And you could always observe which records are located in ARP cache using the ARP command in terminal. Let's go to the terminal and here simply enter ARP-A, like that. On Windows, same command is available. And here on the first line, I see basically record that was just obtained using ARP protocol. IP address 192.168.1.1 is at this MAC address. And again, this MAC address was received in ARP response from my default gateway. And uh, this IP address with this MAC address is located behind Ethernet 0 interface in my case. Also, on the next line, I see this strange binding. And basically, this binding IP address to MAC address was added to ARP cache automatically by operating system. And here I see strange IP address, this one. And my question to you what this IP address represents. This IP address is broadcast network address of the network my computer is located in. My computer has MASK24 that was assigned by DHCP server. I have shown you that before in one of the previous sections. And that's why in host part, there are all ones, 255 in last octet. And that means that here I see broadcast network address. And if my computer wants to send some data to destination IP address, this one, broadcast network address, then on data link layer, my computer will add destination MAC address all Fs. It means that destination MAC address will be broadcast and destination IP address will be broadcast network address. Right? Also, there are two additional records in my case, this one and this one, and basically those Mappings represent multicast IP addresses. Here is multicast IP address and here is one more multicast IP address. And multicast IP addresses are automatically translated to multicast MAC addresses. And here you see same sections at the beginning of every multicast MAC address. 105E. Alright, that's it about ARP cache on my computer and basically main binding that I wanted to demonstrate to you is here. It is the IP address of default gateway and here is its MAC address. And that's data that was obtained by ARP protocol in those requests and responses. Alright, that's all for this demonstration and next let's get back to diagram and I'll explain you how the same action looks like, I mean ARP request and response, if we want to send data to remote host that is located in other network. I'll see you guys next.